Living in Bondage is 27 years old. So basically, I'm 36 now, so I was nine. Yeah, I was nine when I watched it. Okay. For me, um, I'm in the entertainment industry and I, I've always wanted to branch, branch into like movie production and Nollywood, of course. And from a business perspective, <clears throat> I wanted to come in with, I wanted my first movie to be a movie that would, that, that already had an existing brand to, you know, um, that I could leverage on. So coming up with my own scripts, that would involve a lot of marketing for, you know, a first timer in, in the industry who hadn't made his name, of course. So I started to um, look for a movie that already had, a, you know, clout, branding attached to it. And then with a bit of marketing and with a remake of that same movie, I would probably, yeah, hit it. So that's why I felt Living in Bondage was, and Living in Bondage was, was such a powerful story. Um, you know, it, it started in Hollywood. And if you look at Hollywood, they do a lot of remakes. So it was just perfect for me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, in, um, of course, um, I didn't have any background in Nollywood. So um, I had people that I wanted to feature in, in, in the film. Um, for example, Eina. I, I felt Eina would, because Eina had an Igbo background, he could speak Igbo very well. I felt it would be ideal to play Anduke Kison. But the director and the producer had, you know, um, somebody else in mind. They wanted a fresh face. I didn't see the reason why they would want a fresh face. But now I can, I can, I can understand, you know. Um, so from, from the creative angle, I didn't really get involved. I, I just allowed them to do their thing. You know, there are days that <laughs> they would call me to complain about this actress or that actor. I'm like, you guys told me not to get involved in the creative angle now. So just let me just handle the financial bit. Deal with your own with your own um, issues. Just leave me to handle the um, the financial bit of it. So yeah, I, I really didn't get involved in auditioning. Okay, Ramsey is my very good friend. You know, her, um, in Nollywood, he's my closest friend, next to Aina. These are my two very good friends. So in fact, when I bought. The right. I, I, I called Ramsey and I said, I want to invest in your industry. And when I charged you've come, I'm like, yeah, I want to invest in your industry and I want to redo living in bondage. We're like, how? I said, I want to redo, redo living in bondage. Call the guy who owns your right. I want to get it. I want to pay for it this week. He thought I was joking. Um, he called the guy. The guy said he lives in the east, that if you should come to his house in the east, in his village. We got on the flight the next day, went to his house. We discussed it was I'm a, I'm a spontaneous businessman so there and then we discussed there and then we credited him you know I, I will we sell this deal before we even started drafting contracts Do you get me so um from 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 the house from his house and Ramji started heading back to the airport and I asked Ramji have you directed any any movie before he said no I said then you should direct this movie Do you get you should Ramji was like um, he has always wanted to direct, um, um, he has always wanted to um, direct a Nollywood movie, but he didn't want his debut to be something mediocre. You know, I, I said to him, this movie is not going to be me, me, mediocre, but just put it, put, put it in mind, I would leave it open to you, um, and if the, if the time comes up and you're available to do it, then sure. So I think Ramsey was the first person that came to mind in terms of directing. Even though at some point Ramsey got really busy, I, I wanted to work with somebody else, Steve Steve Gukas. I wanted to get Steve Gukas to come and direct it because I, I've seen I saw some of his work and I loved what he, what he is, what he has done. And then as of the time Steve was about to kick off directing, Ramsey got less busy, came back into the picture. So Steve and Ramsey decided to co-direct. 
Ramsey was the main director, Steve was the main producer, but of course they were, you know, helping each other. Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've seen a lot of Nollywood movies. Um, I just felt like the, the problem we suffer in Nigeria is the people who have the ability to do things, you know, the people who have the ability to take, to take things to the next level, don't get involved. Do you get my point? Like, um, see our music industry is going to the next level because people have decided to get involved. You get me. So I, I hope people like me and other people who believe in Nollywood would get involved. That's no reason why we, should, we shouldn't shoot movies bigger than Living in Bondage. That's, it's, it's not rocket science. Do you get me? We've been, we, we've been shooting for the past two years. I bought this right four years ago. So we're, we've been taking our time, taking our time. Do you get my point? Because we've gotten to that point whereby, you know, if you invest in the, in the, in the industry, you should get your money back. Now people like us are getting interested because then we have the issue of piracy whereby you don't want to spend money in movie making because they will pirate it. And when you don't spend money, you, you end up creating trash. But now because we have the cinema culture has improved, we have over 56 cinemas now. Every year we have the numbers of cinemas increasing. You can easily make your money from box office. So more people are are getting more people are encouraged to invest more money in the industry. And when you invest more money in the industry, you get you get better quality movies. Do you get my point? Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Um, um, this is just the beginning. I'm just scratching the surface. I'm just scratching, like. Whenever I get into, whenever I go into an industry, I go hard. So I'm, I'm, I'm going hard. This, this movie is just the beginning. I'm going, I'm going to go hard. Do you get me? If there's going to be a sequel, I'm going to involve, I'm going, I'm going to involve Hollywood. At least two A-list actors. If there's going to be a sequel, because I, I want to be able to di distribute worldwide. This is my first project, and, and it's, it's looking this good. So I'm going to go hard. So yeah, there's a lot more to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For example, the <coughs> we went to Durban, a couple of us to shoot a couple of scenes. There were some actors who flew to Durban for just one scene. That one scene they didn't even talk. It was like you can't you can me. So this time around, I would Photoshop them in that scene if I have to. You get if I have to, but because. I told my producer and my director not that I wasn't going to leave any stone unturned. That I didn't want to all this, you know, cut and cut and what's that thing called? Cut and join. Exactly. I didn't want. I just wondered if this guy is meant to be in this scene and this scene is meant to be shot in Monaco. Let's shoot him. Which, which, in fact, that's a that's a that's a part of the movie that was shot in Monaco that wasn't in the movie. Do you get my point? Because. At some point, we, 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 we changed the script. So there's, there's a part of the script that was meant to be in, in Monaco, which was shot, but it wasn't in the movie. So there are a lot of things that money was spent here and there that we, we could have saved. But I don't regret these things. You know, it's a learning experience. Do you get me? I, I invested in this movie not to make money. I invested, I, I invested in this movie to make my name, like to let Nollywood know that, OK, this is a, that's, it's, it's a new dawn. Like there are new investors in this industry. We're about to start. You get me. Wake up. We are about to get amazing movies. So this for me wasn't really about making making money. So I, I I didn't really invest to make my money back. I invested to make an impact. Because when you make an impact, you open doors to make your money back. Yeah. So I didn't really regret anything. I'm neither here or there because this hate speech, at times, it's actually bad. There are people that just, there are people that just haters. People that just go on the internet who who do not have their faceless human beings, and they just, they just say evil things. You get, 
at the other, on the other hand, you know, you can't, that's freedom of speech as well. You can't just decide, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, I try not to get involved in, in all of that, but I, I understand where the government is coming from. I also understand where the citizens are, are, are coming from as well. But it's, it's difficult not to, it's, it's, I feel like, I feel like it should be regulated, yeah. You know, there are people who lose their lives from a faceless person abusing them on Facebook or Instagram. You get, and these people that are faceless probably sleeping on the floor somewhere. Do you get my point? Yeah, like, you know, you put up a, a post on Instagram, somebody will come and say something very stupid, like, where is your... Something very silly, like, do you, and this person doesn't even know you. This person doesn't even... Um, I might even know you and just create a fake account just to 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 tell you terrible things. And then these things also affect people like human beings now. Do you get my point? So I don't blame the government to an extent. I also don't blame the people, but there needs to be some form of regulation, in my opinion. Project. Working on project. Projects, too many projects, yeah. I do things I have a passion for. So for me, work is play. Yeah, I, just living in bondage project was, was fun for me. You get me? Going to go and shoot in Cape Town was fun. Going to shoot in Durban was fun. So, um, yeah, I, I invest in things I have passion for. So for me, Work is always play. No. <laughs> yeah, but everything is, is looking like it, it was all planned out, but yeah. Um, training work started, I started from a sports bar apparently. So I started 12 years ago from a little sports bar. So because it was a sports bar, I called it play sports bar, play football. And then from there, it, it became, it started from a sports bar, it became a club, from a club, it became to, it grew into a network of um, entrepreneurs, professionals, you get me. And then from, from there, from play, I found to play network. We started investing in hotels, restaurants, nightclubs. Um, Anything that has to do with entertainment, we just started branching out. Okay. Do you get me? Yeah. So, um, play wasn't the name. Play was born from a sports bar. No, 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 no. So we have play management company, which we manage talent. Um, we have we have Juliet Ibrahim. We we signed per industry. So we are going to. And focus on marketing Swanky as a, as a new Nollywood face. You know, Swanky is such an amazing talent. Oh my God. He's such an amazing talent. You know, we're, we're looking to exporting his brand beyond, you know, beyond Africa, to be honest. Yeah, I'm so happy that Living in Bondi discovered someone like Swanky. Um, and we're hopefully hoping that we're going to discover more, more talent in different industries as well. So there are three types of cigar smokers, yeah? Those who want to quit cigarettes. You know, with cigars, you don't inhale it. So those who want to quit cigarettes, try to use cigar because it's, it's a habit. When you have cigarettes in your mouth, right? So those who want to quit cigarettes, use Use, use cigars. I'm not in that category. The people who are, are actually addicted to cigar smoking, um, I'm also not in, in that category. The third category are those who smoke cigars because it's part of their accessory. So that's where I'm falling. Like, I, I think for me, cigars are like, you know, watches, sunglasses, cigars. Yeah, it, it goes with my look. I'm not addicted. I don't smoke cigarettes, I don't smoke weed. Yeah, so for me, cigars, I, I can go two weeks without smoking. So it's not something that I'm addicted to. 
but it, it it goes really well with whiskey so um you might as well smoke a little <laughs> if you are sipping on some good whiskey yeah so yeah thank you uh this experience was um mind-blowing it was rough uh rough uh, for so many reasons besides uh the production itself trying to do the most to get the best you know and um it was uh there were a lot of uh stops and continuations you know uh whatever we shot before that didn't seem right we had to go back regardless of how many people were involved and how much money had to be spent it's usually not very easy especially when you have, have other things lined up uh living in bondage happens to be a title that i, I got contacted for the but just before they got the rights, this is years ago, and I had looked forward to being in the film ever since, uh, especially on a personal note growing up. To digress, it's uh, special to me, especially because as a child, as a Catholic uh, boy, uh, during my confirmation uh, final classes, the day before the Sunday we get confirmed in church, uh, our catechists sent out uh, names to us to choose from what names uh, we want as our confirmation names in Catholic Church. And I, I had to look for the name that came closest to Andy because Andy from Ligurian Bondage was the biggest thing at the time. You know, so I went with Andrew, you know, only for years, fast forward after, to get contacted to play Andy's son. You know, uh, but as the years went by in trying to make the film happen, my career was growing as well. And uh, they had been trying here and there to put a team together and Steve Gukas came on board. And between he, him and Ramsey being the director, they, they thought, hey, at this point, uh, it's going to be a lot better to have on this son be uh, a not-so-known face or an unknown face. Because we had that with the way the story had been coined out or tailored now to push me as, uh, uh, the, the, you know, that character, you know, be being established. You know, someone called it the Mad Demon Cos, you know. So, um, and it sounded really, you know, on point. As much as I had that huge dream, you know, to be Andy's son coming off of uh, my, you know, love for the character as a child, I was still very happy and excited to be part of the project in whatever capacity, you know. So um, that's how come the Obino Mego character opened up for me and uh, became what it is. Uh, another thing that pushed me about during the shoot was that um, it happened to coincide with another project which happens to be on the top of the list of my career. Uh, projects, you know, Living Bondages make, makes that list, and this other one also makes the list, uh, being Badamasi, you know, so the both films came on my table at the same time, and we had to work out uh, modalities, not forgetting the fact that for Badamasi I had to take off my beard completely, like I've never done as an actor, and having to juggle both projects, and it's a completely different character from who I am or who I've ever played, having to sound nothing, um, like a living uh, person, it's a biopic of a person alive, IBB. You know, so this project came the same time and I had to, you know, split my, 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 you know, my mindset as an actor for the first time to juggle both characters that really required me shifting from myself as a, you know, so uh, you can see oh, with this story it couldn't have been easy, but then somehow it was just work, you know, and uh, I put it all in and I'm happy to see that the uh, outcome is being celebrated today. Yeah, going by what Living in the sequel is cracking down Twitter. You know, it's been since it, uh, the first day. It, you know, it set the record for the first day opening in 019, set the record for the f biggest opening weekend, f biggest film f uh, first week, biggest film second week, outdoing all the Hollywood films, which is unusual in this time of the year, not December. You know, and it's in its third week with a record again for a Nigerian film of the year, and it's still the first. You know, so uh, that speaks for itself. There's a lot, lot of repeated viewing, people going back to the cinema, paying transport, getting in, in, in traffic, you know, paying a thousand five, sometimes two thousand five, depending on the cinema they are in, to see the film more than once, twice, three times, and they come back to tweet at you, you know, then you know you have a good film. And you can be sure that during the holiday season, being December, uh, they will go and see it again. So that's, that speaks for itself. So anyone that hasn't seen it, I'm sure, know what to expect and uh, they can wait at their convenience. It was amazing. I'm a big fan of um, uh, directors, actors turned directors. I'm a big fan of women as directors uh, for different reasons. You know, my training or my experience has been more male 
Uh, it's been a male-dominated industry. The world is changing and evolving. Women are coming on board now. You know, uh, and women have a, a, a special touch and approach to, to work that I, I love. It, there's a soothing thing about it, uh, being on, under the care of a woman on set. And then for an actor turned director, they come from a place of understanding. So those things that you wish your director knew as an actor, but then is handling issues with you, characterization differently. There's always that sometimes the directors that don't know how to get you to do what they want without shifting you out of character because they are just, their personality is just too, and there are ways to handle actors. You have to understand each actor and how to access them. And actors, turn director usually, I've worked with Desmond Elliott, this is uh, Ramsey now, and I find that he has the same thing. He wants to treat an actor the way he would want to be treated as an actor on that director. So being a director now, he wears both shoes. So his uh, approach to directing an actor, you know, the way he wants is different. You know, his care and, you know, everything about the, the, the approach is, is just different and quite refreshing. I've always known him to have, you know, a lot of great and grand ideas and I was really excited when I heard he was coming on board this so he could get a platform to express all of those things, so, yeah. Now, Mr. Charles, uh, Charles of Play, yeah, he's the executive producer, by the way. Uh, Steve Gukas is the producer, Charles is the executive producer, you know, yeah, so, um, like I said, he, he contacted me when he got the rights, or right before, he's someone I've known before now, before the project, you know, so we go way back, and um, he's always wanted to be in film, but then choosing the right project was a, uh, a thing, until he decided to do Living in Bondage, and it sounded like the best idea ever, you know, and um, yeah, it was, it was a smooth run, um, I give him a whole big thumbs up, because, uh, it can be a gamble to, to do this, you know, it took a lot of gambles trying to bring back a classic, like a classic that's like a holy grail of, uh, of uh, Nollywood, like you don't touch a classic just like that and then you touch it and then your director is not Igbo, your producer is not Igbo, you know, you, you go against all the conventional thoughts uh, to approach, in approaching a, a project like this and you still come out with this, you know. Uh, whether, whether it be it's his personal fund or partners and everything, it takes a big mind, you know, to take such a bold step and throw it all in. The kind of money that went in uh, to get the quality people like celebrating today, it's not every day you see investors come on board this industry that way without figuring out the end from the beginning, you know. So I give him a big thumbs up and um, I hope we get more of such, a, you know, big hearted investors in the industry. In our climb in Nigeria, uh, globally is too wide. Uh, okay. I'll just keep, I'll keep it. I'll keep it locally. Okay. You know, I've been blessed to work with uh, quite a number of uh, top female, you know, actors. Uh, uh, I still look. For, I was meant to work with Omotala. I've, I've meant to have worked like three, four times, but it just didn't work out. Um, I, I also believe, you know, what's yours is yours. I've always looked forward, like, I've, Omotala has, in fact, at one point, you graduated from Crush to Respect. When I got in the industry, it became Respect, you know? You know, so, yeah, um, it would be great to work with Omotala. Absolutely, uh, but then, the way I function, it comes to me. When it comes, I'll know it's time, and once it comes that way, it's on, you know? But for direction, I think I would like to acquire a little bit more technical skills. You know, formally, I, I think I, I have a mind that works for directing. But for now, I'm, I'm being a bit more um, pricked to produce. I'm an Igbo man. I want, to, I want to turn money around first before I start doing passion. Passion is enough in acting, you know. So I would like to graduate from this into producing, which I do, I've, I've been doing, but in the shadows, not like owning my own project full on. But now, yes, uh, I'll be going into creating my own projects. Oh yeah, yes. who yeah who doesn't like burner? Mm, I don't quite have one. I'll call a favorite. I have a group of you know artists that I have a lot of respect and love their music and what they represent in the space. So, but burner boy, I happens to be one. I don't know where you heard that, but then it must have come from a place of oh Nigerians are only just waking up to burner. I think he's been on this level from day one. I don't think he's had anything that's not been premium. 
It's just that, uh, you know, anytime when people wake up, maybe that morning. So this is Nigeria people's morning, you know, waking up to Burner Boy, you know, but yes, I think he's solid. I think uh, his, 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 he has that thing of excellence in his music and he owns his own style and, you know, he, I just like, I like, I like his brand. Uh, right now, no, I love Two Face, I love Whiskey, I love David O. You know, um, it's, it's it's tricky when you start to call names because you you definitely don't remember all. But there's so many artists out there from Nigeria that do it for me in different ways at different times. I don't have a particular favorite here. I haven't quite followed that conversation, to be honest, because I've had the craziest season of my entire career, you know, coming, leading to this interview right now. But I do, I'm aware of it. And um, if I'm not mistaken, it's about uh, uh, limiting yes. the language, social language in the space. But not, is it about withdrawing certain features or platforms? Mm. Just limiting what you say yes. and how it can land you in trouble. Yeah. Language, I mean, it's important to have these conversations, but limiting may not really be... Uh, the way forward because how do you really check to be sure that uh, you're not uh, arresting someone whose account is being run by someone else or there's so many things that we have to consider before doing this you know who's going to take the brunt for when an account is hacked and someone sends out something you know we haven't checked it from all those angles so it's very tricky you know we can uh, sensitize people through the same platforms on hate speech and its consequences and uh, what it does to us as a people and approach it from a place of sensitization as against uh, slamming you with uh, you know, laws that you know, could be anything. I could pick up someone's phone and tweet because they didn't lock their phone and you go after them. It doesn't make much sense to me. At least that's what it is there. Like, I'm into men. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is a first. I've never been asked this question before. I am not sure where that's coming from, but if I'm to guess, it would come from uh, my performance uh, in the wedding party film, Destination Dubai, part one and two, actually. This, or what, what not, part two, have the outcome of part one. You know, um, I find it very interesting as, as an actor, especially in this climb in Nigeria. So when you act a romantic movie and you do it well, and there's genuine, truthful, believable chemistry with you and your love interest, of which I have a lot of such films, it's hard for the fans or the viewers or whoever, friends that know me that have seen it, to actually see it and say, wow, great performance, I love the chemistry. All they say is, I'm sure you people are involved. There's no way that fire couldn't have been real. And I'm like, how about giving me a compliment as bringing believability to the role? You know, and uh, I think that has transcended into Wedding Party. And if I'm to break down that analysis further, I would like to think, because like, I'm a human behavior person and I like to figure things out from patterns. I like to think that perhaps because there isn't any word or there aren't stories around there like some of my contemporaries about who they're seeing or dating to tie me to. And this happens to be the biggest romantic film I've been in, Wedding Party. So people have consumed me as a, a white woman lover. You know, which isn't uh, the case. I don't have a problem with white women. I love women as uh, whether black or, or white. I don't care about that. I think I can settle down anywhere in the world as a person. That's who I am. You know, but it's, there's no specifics uh, to or preference to to the this, yeah what I like in terms of uh, skin tone or race. You know, so perhaps I should put out a few more a few scandals here with black girls and people say oh he likes black girls too you know so yeah no it's um, it's not a preference yeah some people actually told me two days ago or i was somewhere and some two people were discussing that i am married to the white girl from the wedding party and that um we're keeping it quiet and she's pregnant now and that's why i'm so relaxed that's why i don't talk about whether i'm um, whether when people talk about me on Twitter, because I had a lot of babies and it's, I put a lot of pictures up of babies, people feel like, oh, he loves babies. That's why he doesn't bother when people say, when are you getting married? Because he's already married. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so good question. This, I hope this clears it. I hope this goes round for you people to listen to. Oh, well, yes. Um, I always like to address and defend whatever I do. So when you said problems with journalists, I'm like, mm, that's not my nature. But saying this, yes. 
I have a side to me that always wants excellence around me. Even in things that I may not be perfect at, I like to see effort around me because I believe uh, when I empower people, sometimes with words, it's in case tomorrow I need the same word, you give it back to me. So I feel like if I see something going wrong, it's for me to point out, especially with the much younger people. And uh, in this space that we're in, I find that on red carpets, people just go with questions that they were given in general terms. If they don't know when to divert and make that their interview moment bigger, you know. So, um, I mean, if you go to Hollywood, you see all this red carpet uh, cheering uh, stars. Some of them are rented. There's a reason for that. And for the business of uh, media, the bigger the person in front of the screen is, the bigger your audience and the eyeballs. This is now media 101 that we're going into with this question you know but i feel like you don't come on a red carpet send three people to go pull your celebrity up for the moment for the interview and you come there and you ask her excuse me sir what is your name there are way there are interviews for that where you introduce yourself and go on but on the red carpet it doesn't work for you as the person interviewing the more the bigger you understand the person you're with or you show the excitement the more the energy with the audience to see who you have and the bigger it makes you look so you can't come there looking lost and the one that breaks my heart the most is you're at the premiere of my film you're interviewing me in front of the banner that has my face alone and my name and the camera is showing that and you're still asking me what is my name you know and so it doesn't work it's not um, it's not personal it's, it's me trying to say, you guys need to do more work. You come on the red carpet, you have no information on the person you're interviewing. You just have the questions you were given. No form of research. Not even before he comes, you say, what's your name before we go on camera? You get what I mean? So it just kind of makes you look like, I mean, you might as well interview anybody else because we work and this is our product. So that means I've been selling, if I were a Coke bottle, I've been selling Coke for 10 years and you don't know my name is Coke. Even if you don't know, you, you can inquire before you take the interview. That is my own understanding of how it should work. I don't know if it's um, wrong or right, but I think it makes more sense for them. Because the bigger the fish you catch, the more attention you draw to yourself. And that makes you a bigger interviewer or red carpet host. And I want to see their careers grow. I don't want celebrities to keep running from them. Because it is the audience that the celebrities pull that make them see them. Otherwise, with regular keep interviewing regular people, they're not, they're not going to get that. And they are also brands, image brands. So I, I approach it from that angle. It's never a problem. It's just at some point I decided, you know what, I'm going to put it this way. Before I used to say, oh, you know, I, used to, I could talk to people like, you know, you should do it this way, you know, go out of my way to tell you. Or I just avoid the red carpet. So why am I there on the red carpet for the event if I don't want to add value to the event for the event organizer? I like to add value, and I believe value comes in form of at least doing the record appearance so they, they can have content, right? So if I keep avoiding that, I'm taking away value, but I am there to enjoy the show, and that would be unfair. So they should help us bring the required value for the organizers of the show. Local meal. Uh, that's very confusing because I'm a very local food person and I'm very adventurous. I love to cook local food. I love to consume. I love to try out new food from different cultures. Whenever I go to, yeah, whenever I go to, oh, that's one of my favorite things to do. Whenever I go to a new place, culture, I ask them what their number one local food is and I must try it. So I don't really quite have one. It's, it depends. But swallow is a constant, yeah, swallow and rice in different forms. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, it was pretty hard to keep up performances with them, but also at the same time, they were all very cozy and professional. You know, most of them, a few of them I had known before, but the veterans, it may be my first time working with them. So basically, you know, I would just say that professionalism was the order of the day. So they, they, they knew they had to like be friendly or encourage me to be able to, for me to be able to give my best. I haven't watched it till now. Well, the first time I saw the script, it was, there was so many flags. Like, it was literally like my, my own story. 
you know I connected to the story on so many levels so uh, I didn't want to watch the film because part of my acting prowess comes from being able to imitate people so I felt like if I w saw the first one I would just come on set and try to be a younger Andy so I decided not to see it. I just saw snippets you know then head wall of mouth and then pray to God and say God should help me be able to pull this off and that's it Well, very intimidated, first of all. I mean, these are the guys that started the movement, you know. So being in the same room or having to rehearse with them, or maybe, for example, <laughs> if you wanted to, like, maybe point out a line they were reading wrong, you have to ask yourself, should I talk or should I be quiet? Before they ask me, where, 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 where are you doing? Where we begin this thing? So all those things was what culminated into the final uh, film we're seeing now. But uh, basically, I felt that, I mean, you have, you have, you, I definitely had to man up. I had to like say my good mornings and respect my elders and read the script and be there before they got there. Basically, those were the, those were the things I needed to do. Uh, scream at me. There's one guy called Joshua. <laughs> he was the AD. He's always screaming. So apart from that, I mean, Ramsey's a gentleman. Uh, Andy's a great guy. That's Mr. Kenneth Okonkwo. KOK wasn't on set a lot, but then, you know, he's KOK. So that's it. Well, the most challenging aspect of it was being Andy's son, especially seen as the sequel was built around the character Namdi. Being able to pull off that performance that could be likened or could be compared to or could, you know, be be talked about as and Andy Andy's character was quite big. It's still big, you know. So to be able to get to those levels, to be able to deliver everything to director one of me, basically uh, that was that was the difficult part. Well, for me, as an upcoming actor, I've always said to myself that uh, Ramsey is the peak of the pack. Ramsey is the guy at the top. The reason is not because he was the first, but the reason is because I don't think I've seen two films where Ramsey was the same person. You know, sometimes you get tired of seeing a particular actor because they are always the same thing, you know. But for me, Mr. Noah is charismatic. He's, he's, he's given to his character always. So... I knew that the scenes I had with him, I better bring. I don't even know how many hours a night I sleep because I literally had to read every, every scene before the day since it was scheduled to know what I'm doing before that day. So working with him as a director was a whole new level because, I mean, uh, as an actor, you're literally like uh, an empty canvas. You know, the director is one who does the brush strokes and all of that. So I had to let myself go at some point and listen to everything he had to say or however he wanted me to act or represent so that that's it was pretty intense but i mean seeing the end result now it's great well uh mr charles is like a brother to me now you know like so many dots are being connected at the end of the day i feel like for such a good film to be made, everybody needed to be good, first of all, at heart, then also at work. Because if you think about this, people are like Kelly's character. I always thought, I'm mean, listening, the chemistry you're seeing is not because uh, we haven't had other great actresses. I feel like it's because she's a beautiful person inside and out. So when you, when you say something nice or something that's not supposed to be too funny to Kelly, she starts to laugh. So it makes everything on camera look natural, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, Mr. Charles is one of those guys who is a delight to meet or a delight to work with. He doesn't pressure anything. He allows the creatives to do their work. He comes in when he needs to come in. And he's always willing to help. So his door is always open. So that's the dream executive producer for any actor or filmmaker. Well, the impact of breaking free is exactly what it is. You know, it's broken me free now. I mean, for everybody who I've always wanted to speak to, in terms of work, directors, producers, 
they basically all know me now, or at least know to an extent what I can do or what I can't do. So living bondage has been like gigantic for me, enormous, like literally very huge to not just my career, but to the career of almost everybody in the film. That's it. Well, I always, always thought I was going to be a footballer, basically. So, I guess if acting didn't work out, I probably would have tried my career at 35 in football. For me, going forward after living in bondage, I, I always have this philosophy that as a true artist, it's not really about the money. It's more about how much change and how much effect you can have on your generation. So for me, moving forward, I honestly just want to be able to be involved with the films that put Nollywood on the global map. That's it. My biggest fear in life would be maybe to go into marriage and come out of it. I really want to go and stay. I'm all for the love. Mr. Romantic, I guess. Uh, I don't know about romantic, but I'm a good guy. Hopelessly romantic, that's how my ex described me. <laughs> God-fearing, lovable, slim. <laughs> yeah, that's it. My favorite actor, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, you know, we all have different strengths for different genre of film. So basically my favorite actor right now would be anybody who's able to put together almost all genres in one film. So, I don't know, I can't say for now. Uh, party after party, party after party. That's the only thing about somebody. I think it's cool. Well, my mom has seen the film. Your mom is a lecturer. And a pastor too. Pastor, your dad. Pastor as well. I'm, I'm, I'm the child. I'm a child of God. So when they saw the kissing scene, I know my mom had nightmares for about three days, but she was, she, she would be alright. <laughs> It's the job we have chosen. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much. Um, I was very excited. I told my mom about it. I, I jumped around a bit. <laughs> I was very, very happy to get the role. No, this is Living in Bondage is not my first movie. I've um, been doing movies for a while now and um, getting this role to me is just a dream come true. Uh, working with Ramsey Noah for me has been nothing short of a dream come true because uh, this is my first time actually I got to meet Ramsey Noah on this set and um, him directing me has been an amazing experience. I got to learn a lot of things. I, I learned how to be passionate about the character and um, it inspired me to get into directing as well. So um, Ramsey Noah, he's amazing at what he does. He's very passionate about everything that he does acting, directing, whatever it is. He sees the character, he goes, he pays attention to detail. And that, to me, is what makes icons, legends. And I'm just blessed to have worked with him. The most, well, I'd say two challenging parts now because clearly <laughs> the movie is out and it's fine. But um, one of the challenging parts for my character in the movie was laying in the coffin. 
that was that was rather interesting because um obviously i'm not dead <laughs> and uh, i i'm quite claustrophobic so being in a very tight space for me was just i was a little bit anxious but then i wanted to do something that frightened me so i gave i dared myself to do it and i did it and that was one goal for me that i said the second part i would say was challenging although it wasn't really challenging while we we're shooting it would be the sex scene because um it was very simple it was straight to the point and it was shot but then it's challenging because a lot of people see it and they go wow that was so intimate and that was so how did you do it or it felt so real and, did you guys really do it no <laughs> no we didn't it wasn't even close to real it wasn't even close to being intimate at all but you know that was rather challenging because there were a lot of nerves and there were like a bunch of people in the room so yeah <laughs> yeah I don't remember how old I was when I watched the first Leave It in Bondage, but I do know for a fact that I could not go to the restroom by myself after watching <laughs> Leave It in Bondage for the longest time. Even up until now. <laughs> well, no, well, no. I mean, now, obviously, I can do that. But then, once in a while when you're alone, you kind of feel like maybe Merit is standing by the corner somewhere <laughs> watching you. But, yeah, that, that shows that it was such a great movie that it scared me all through my childhood. I think Nollywood has come a very long way from the very first living in bondage up until this point. It's just, I would say ironic that living in bondage is always the, would I, would I say the benchmark or the yeah, it, the living in bondage always sets the pace for um, for Nollywood, and given the movie that we just made now, we definitely have revolutionized the industry and set the pace. So from this moment forward, if you didn't learn anything from this production at all, you would know that you really need to sit up and take better precaution in terms of producing your movies, in terms of making film, in terms of storytelling. And I feel like I don't need to advise Nollywood about what to do. They already know what to do. They've been scared about spending money making films in the past and feeling like they won't recoup. But this movie has changed the narrative. This movie has shown that you can make a good film it doesn't have to be a comedy and it will still sell and you will still make money and Nigerians will actually come out to watch it. So I don't need to tell them, they know what to do. I've learned, I've learned now as an individual to not um, put myself in a position where I have to shoot myself in the foot. So I would advise people to have no expectations when it comes to me. It's better for my heart rate. <laughs> yeah, so when, when the music is ready, you definitely will get music. When the films are ready, you definitely will get film. When the artworks and just the books, everything, when it's ready, you get it in due time. That's all I can say. I have seen in life that um, this thing called dreams and manifestations are actually real. So all the people that I dreamt of working with or that scared me from losing bondage and, you know, looking at them act or make movies in the past, I have either come in contact with them or worked with them in some way or form. So I won't even say I have dreams anymore. I'm just waiting for it to happen now. So most of the people that I've dreamt of working with i've worked with them in some shape or form so now let's take it global so if i'm going to work with anybody i think i want to work with Shah Rukh khan <laughs> amitabh bachan not that i'm pro indian but these people i like and um obviously hollywood all over the world i would love to work with great people i 
I am. Well, I can tell you this. I'm in a relationship and I'm good. I don't like to talk about my private life. Most people don't like to talk about their private yeah, lives. Yeah. yeah, I'm in a good. Yeah, thank you so much for respecting that. I'm in a good place. I can't complain. I didn't get to work with the Charles of Play first hand in the movie because my scenes were obviously mostly with uh, Namdi. And yeah, so, but um, interacting with him in real life i got to find out that his his family actually his wife uh, is uh, her birthday is the day before mine and we went to high school together she was in my class we're in the same clique yeah so technically <laughs> he's, he's he's pretty much close to home so i'm just happy that i'm doing this with family Um, I can tell you this now, this is exclusive to you. In the beginning, there wasn't really chemistry. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't really any chemistry. We had to spend days talking to each other, getting to know each other to the point where we broke off that, you know, jinx of not being able to communicate or not being able to get the yeah come together interact properly oh it was, it was a struggle <laughs> a lot of people won't know that but i'm glad that um they got to see that uh it was effortless but it wasn't as effortless as it seems in real life but working with him has been nothing short of beautiful and amazing he's an amazing actor he takes really care of his duties is his acting um, roles and he takes everything into detail and he makes sure that he gives it a hundred and ten percent and that's what I like about him towards the end of us acting together that's when the whole chemistry thing came up and it was like oh no let's do more but yeah we had to finish so it was great yeah thank you, thank you.